We have some brand new leaks when it comes to the Xbox and Bethesda showcase from third party games that will be shown to brand new Xbox first party games that might get a surprise release date. I want to go into every single game that's in this leak but also talk about what we might see at this event. The gaming news has been going crazy lately so let's get into what's true and what might not come to the game showcase. Let's do this. All right, so you know the drill. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you want to be notified on future content, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. Everything is greatly appreciated. Okay, let's just get right into the most obvious games right out the gate. So we can get into the surprise games and maybe some third-party games that might be out there. So the first thing I want to talk about is obviously Starfield. It's supposed to be the vocal point of the show, and to be honest, it needs to be. Now, I expect to see gameplay, and everyone else should expect to see it also. Yet, if Xbox doesn't show gameplay, I wouldn't be surprised if this game is farther out than a year. I'm talking holiday 2023 type of release time frame. That's if we don't get gameplay. With that said, I have a feeling we might get some extended gameplay with Todd Howard doing his usual thing on stage. This is one of the biggest games coming out this entire generation, and I want to see gameplay in an extended form. No more engine showcases, no more art direction photos, none of that. Straight gameplay, please. Yet, if it's not shown at this E3 with deep gameplay explanations, I expect it to be delayed longer than just a year because what other event outside of the Game Awards will they show this? Will Xbox have another event later to talk about this? I don't think so. So I have a feeling that this game is either going to be shown here with gameplay or it's going to be delayed a lot further down the line than we all thought. After that, of course, it's Redfall, which I have a feeling might be closer to release than Starfield. We have to remember, this was supposed to come out this summer. That's the release date everyone saw last year at the E3 event. It's at summer 2022. So I expect this game to get gameplay and a deep dive of what it could be. I'm not talking 10 minutes or anything like that. I'm saying it will probably be shown in a gameplay trailer with some developer talking over the game. Now, of course, this game could have a bigger presence since it did close out E3 last year, and that to me is a pretty big deal. Not to mention, it's Arcane's biggest game they've ever made bar none. So I expect to see Redfall be shown off and have a spring 2023 release date attached to it. The developers probably asked for about six to eight more months of development and Xbox gave it to them. Yet I think it's time to show us exactly what this game is because a lot of people have more questions than they do have answers of what we should expect from this new IP. From there, I think we see Forza Motorsport with its new engine and all the crazy upgrades this franchise is about to get. We know that Turn 10 has been working on this stuff for I think about 5 years now and have completely revamped their engine to accommodate the current generation consoles. Now I know a lot of people will say this isn't that big of a deal because it's just a racing game. To those people, I just have to say that Forza Motorsport is the best, most advanced racing simulator in the gaming industry. No game stands up to it at all. So I expect Xbox to do what they do best and show this game off with all of its new assets. Giving the Series X its graphical showpiece that it's needed for a very long time. Not to mention, this is a foreshadow to what the next Forza Horizon can look like because they use the same assets that Turn 10 creates. So I'm just excited to see what this veteran studio can pull out because I think this game is going to blow people's minds. After that, I would love to see Avowed, the next big RPG by the extremely talented studio Obsidian Entertainment. We have to remember, this studio has been extremely quiet as of late. They brought out The Outer Worlds three years ago and have only really updated Grounded in that time. So for three years, they've been quiet and have been hard at work on this game. And not to mention, Xbox bought them because of this game before we remember. It wasn't the Outer Worlds that impressed them, it was the game they were working on then, which was Avowed. So I expect to finally see some gameplay with it being slated for a release date of 2023. And I'm not talking late 2023, I'm talking spring or even summer of next year. This is a studio that can turn out games extremely quick. So I'm excited to see what they can bring out, not to mention, I just want to see this game more than most because I love the fantasy aspect direction the studio is going for and it also reminds me of Elder Scrolls which is a franchise I love. I love jumping into fantasy games and I can't wait to see what Obsidian could do when they tackle it in a AAA form. 
From there, we might see the next extended gameplay of Hellblade 2. We have to remember, this game was shown at the Game Awards and it blew every single person's mind. It was one of the best games we've ever seen, graphical wise. It was a six minute gameplay clip that made people question if it was gameplay at all. I have a feeling that Xbox would wanna show that they have a mature, realistic game in development. Yet I do have to admit, this game hasn't been shown at the Xbox E3 showcase at all in the last several years. It's been announced and shown at the Game Awards every single time there is a big reveal. So I think Xbox might save this game for that showcase and have a late 2023 release date for it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's an early 2023 release date. We will just have to wait and see because we all know that Ninja Theory is extremely talented, yet they expanded since joining Xbox and I think they needed a little bit more time to make this game. Not to mention the pandemic hit them really hard, especially since they were doing a lot of motion capture that caused a lot of delays. From there, let's look at the DLC from Forza Horizon 5. We have to remember people, some of the best things about Forza Horizon has been their DLCs. They always bring out some of the best ones we've ever played. The Hot Wheels DLC is to this day one of my favorite DLCs ever. It was so fun and creative. So I expect them to talk about the next DLC for Forza Horizon 5 and probably have a release date of early summer for this year. Yet the one thing I want to keep an eye on for this DLC is if it's going to drop in Game Pass. If we're paying attention, some of the DLC from Xbox First Party Studios isn't going into Game Pass day and date. Unlike Ubisoft Plus, which drops everything in their service, I would like to see the DLC from Xbox just go into Game Pass. So that's something I'm going to keep my eye on, but I'm also excited to see what the new DLC is all about. From there, we have Contraband, the third-party exclusive deal that Xbox has with Avalanche Studios. This is a game I can't wait to see because it revolves around PvP heists and a constant open world. I truly want to see what this game is all about because the trailer didn't really show much. In fact, we got more details from developers talking about it in interviews. It almost sounds like a battle royale set in an open world with other players trying to stop or hijack your heist you're doing across the entire city. This is something I want to see. Because if we remember, Avalanche Studios has some of the best car combat in games from Mad Max to Rage 2. They have some awesome experiences that I'm down for. So let's hope we get some gameplay reveals because I want to see what it's all about. And I have a feeling it's going to be a release date of summer 2023. That just fits well for what I see for coming into the schedule of the next couple of years for Xbox. Contraband coming out in summer 2023 sounds like a perfect date. Okay, just a heads up, from now on, I'm heading into speculative territory, especially when it comes to some of the games and even some of the releases. Because let's be honest with ourselves, while some games are in development, and we know they are, most of these are best guess work when there's going to be release dates, not to mention IPs that are being worked on. If anybody says they know 100% what's happening, they're lying to you. But the first game I want to talk about is the Marcus Phoenix Collection. This has been floating around and I have to admit, I hope it's true. I would love to go through the Gears franchise again, but as a remastered level. And I'm not talking about a resolution bumps and some little things that are enhanced. I want a full on remaster or remake with this thing that is going to be focused on the next gen hardware and a PC port. Halo Master Chief Collection style, except executed and released, not broken. So I hope to see this in 2022, and it might be one of the secret games that Xbox drops into Game Pass that gets everybody excited a little bit, especially on the PC side, since Gears of War 2, 3, and I believe Judgment aren't on the PC. After that, there's the Indiana Jones games from Machine Games. Now, we know this game is real, and it has been announced. It was announced almost two years ago. Now, I have a feeling this game is a little ways out. I think we might get a release date of late 2023, if not early 2024, if not mid-2024. Don't get me wrong, I have a feeling Machine Games is working on this game, and also a surprise game, which, speaking of surprise games, might be Wolfenstein 3. Now, I know some people are speculating that this is going to come out and even get a release date of this year. I'm of the mindset that it isn't going to happen. Now, I would love to be wrong, but I don't see Machine Games releasing Wolfenstein 2 in 2017, Youngblood in the span of two years later in 2019, and then Wolfenstein 3 in 2022 with a brand new Indiana Jones in development in the background. Now, of course, I want to be wrong, and I hope they are making a third Wolfenstein game, but I just have a feeling that they're concentrating on Indiana Jones because it's a massive IP, and they want to make it into a big action-adventure game. But let's hope I'm wrong and we get Wolfenstein 3 released this year or next year, or they at least even announce it. But for my speculation, I think they're just working on Indiana Jones. From there, I want to go into a studio that's been the most quiet, and that's Compulsion Games with their Project Midnight game. This is that dark gothic game that's going to revolve around harpies and all that gothic lore. 
I truly can't wait to see what this game is all about. I would love to see them bring out a massive AAA game that truly shocks so many people. We have to remember, games like We Happy Few was made by like 50 or 60 developers in that studio with a limited budget. The game was pretty cool for that amount of developers working on it, yet we know that the studio has doubled if not tripled in size, so don't be surprised if we see this game come out and be shown with a 2023 release date. Not sure when in 2023 because right now that year is stacked so far, but I have a feeling that Xbox is going to want to show what these people have been working on for the last four years. Think about that. They haven't released a game in four years. So for the last four years, they've hired, expanded, gotten a new studio, and I want to see what they're working on. Now, I don't want to go into much detail about the Coalition or Double Fine because those games they're making are behind closed doors. I've also heard about the Mandalorian game that the Coalition or somebody is making. I've heard about the new Banjo-Kazooie game and a bunch of other projects they're working on. Until those are announced, I don't want to go crazy into that because I think it's all speculation. I have a feeling that the Coalition is going to be quiet this year minus the Gears Phoenix collection. Outside of that, I have a feeling they're trying to perfect the Unreal Engine 5. And I also think that Fable isn't going to be shown. Now, I hope I'm wrong about that, but I have a feeling that game is multiple years away because the studio behind it has been extremely quiet. Now, there could be some surprises, and I have a feeling they're going to show some stuff that we haven't seen, and I'm looking forward to those. But now let's talk about third-party games that are going to show up because everybody keeps talking about first-party and exclusive deals. Well, what about third parties that are going to be at the showcase? Because that usually is a pretty big mainstay. The first one I want to talk about is Assassin's Creed Rift. This is the leaked new Assassin's Creed game that's slated to release this year. I have a feeling that this will be revealed at the Xbox Showcase with advertisement rights going to Xbox. I don't think we'll get extensive gameplay here, but I have a feeling we will get a game, maybe, just maybe a game that comes in day and date with Game Pass. Don't quote me on this, I don't have any leaker information, I just have a feeling. Origins and all these Ubisoft games have gone to Game Pass before. Not to mention, Ubisoft just dropped Extraction in there day and date. So I wouldn't be surprised if they happen to work with Xbox to get Rift in there day and date. They'll tease the game and also give a release date with a Game Pass trailer. But they'll have the gameplay reveal happen at the rumored Ubisoft event coming in July. So I can see them pushing this into Game Pass, get more people into it, and it also gives Xbox a big game coming to their service this year that they can mitigate some of the damage that Redfall and Starfield did. After that, let's talk about Diablo 4, you know, one of the biggest Blizzard games coming out in the next couple of years. With Diablo Immortal coming out in the next couple of days, I wouldn't be surprised if Xbox and Blizzard lock this thing down for a Game Pass release. Now, I know it's a long shot, but I've been waiting for Diablo 4 for a very long time, and I have a feeling that Xbox is trying to get this game to be their first game as a release from the Activision Blizzard deal. Which, by the way, is being rumored that it could finish up by November this year. That's right, November this year. There's some rumors going out there that it could be locked down by November or December in 2022. Imagine if Diablo releases in November, if not December, and Xbox gets this with a day and date drop. It could be massive for the franchise, it could be massive for Game Pass, and it also could be massive for Xbox on PC, because that's where Diablo has really dominated. From there, we'll probably get a Plague's Tale Requiem, which might get a shadow drop of a July or August release date, if not sooner. This game has been extremely quiet, and I have a feeling it's closer to release than people think. With that said, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets delayed like everybody else. But so far, I think it's going to be a great shadow drop at the event, and it gets people excited for Game Pass in summer, because we have to remember, to keep people subscribed, you need games. Now, of course, there might be some surprise games that I didn't talk about and some third-party games. And we have to realize, Xbox did lose a lot of momentum when it comes to Game Pass by the delay of Starfield and Redfall. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get Saints Row or some other big game this holiday season dropping day and date into Game Pass, something like Assassin's Creed. Now, of course, that could be a pipe dream. But I think that Xbox understands to keep people subscribed and to get more people into your service, you need one thing, games. That's exactly what this showcase is going to focus on. Game Pass and the games coming to the service in the next several months, if not the next year. They want to show gamers that their platform is stacked in the next 10 to 12 months. Because right now, the perception is that they don't have anything worth subscribing to for Game Pass. And for people that only play on Xbox for exclusive first party games or exclusive deals, they're right, they don't have anything to play right now. So Xbox needs to change that narrative and show that they have exclusive third-party deals and first-party games coming in the next six months. Let's hope that happens, and let's hope they knock this showcase out the park. 
But that's everything leaked about the E3 showcase that Xbox and Bethesda has planned. What do you think about it? Will we see most of these games we just talked about? What studio are you most excited for? Should we expect some surprises at this event? Will we get something from Blizzard or Activision at the showcase? Or will they focus on first party games they were currently have ready to go out? Or do you think we'll get some third party games and surprise deals? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us at the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I've actually been playing nothing but Sniper Elite 5. It just dropped on Game Pass for Xbox and PC. I've been playing them on both. I first started playing for a few hours on the Xbox Series X. That game looks stunning on there. And I have to admit, I was having a blast with it. I know people don't think it's a massive AAA game, but if you look at the way the game looks, it's an 89 gig download. It has a lot of great 4K assets and it just looks beautiful. I'm loving it. I love the World War II genre, so I'm jumping into that like crazy. And it also looks amazing on my PC with my 3090. It runs very smooth. I have to say, there are a few bugs here and there, but so far, I'm loving the game. And I recommend everybody check it out, especially since it's on Game Pass. What do you have to lose? Download speeds? Just get it downloaded, check it out, and have fun with it. But let me know what you're playing. Are you playing something on your Xbox Series X, S, or are you on your PS5, or are you on your PC playing something? Let me know down below, because that's what we're here for. It's to talk games. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.